Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and part 2 of reading 2K to 10K by Rachel Aaron. So in part 1, we mainly talked about the first chapter. I did some writing exercises. I'm going to do some more writing exercises today, try and do the time portion of writing. Um, maybe with one of my new projects, maybe with my sequel project, we will just have to see because clearly even I don't know. And today we are going to be talking about if writing feels like pulling teeth, you're doing it wrong. Hello, so as you can see I have my book right here. I have my a journal which I'm going to be taking notes with, so let's go. A book is not a battle, nor is it a conquest. A book is a story, and telling it should be an enjoyable exercise. So the next time you don't want to write, don't waste time beating yourself up. Instead, stop and ask yourself why. Why do you not want to do this fundamentally enjoyable thing? What's really going on? So I just finished the chapter, and I think for the rest of this video I'm mainly going to put these into practice, I'm going to write, I'm going to write maybe on all three of my projects, um, we'll see how that goes. Basically for notes, a lot of the major things that I liked that Rachel Aaron talked about, and then I also think could be tied into my previous video about um, productivity during a pandemic. Obviously, Rachel Aaron did not write this during a pandemic. She wrote this in 2013, which, wow. But she talks a lot about the, how the feeling of failure can be crippling, how it's not only detrimental to your mental health and to your self-esteem, that it's also a huge waste of time. She goes on to say that you're probably thinking about writing the wrong way, that writing is really about entertainment, and whenever she's writing something that she doesn't like, whenever she's having bad writing days, she thinks that maybe the characters were off or her tension was lacking. So then she goes on to say that she treats bad writing days as red flags, that they're not indicative of her as a person or her as a writer, that obviously writing is a profession that she wants to do, but those red flags, those bad writing days, end up being progress and necessary because they helped her realize that what she was writing wasn't what she really wanted to write. And then she ends the chapter with, if you're not enjoying your writing, you're probably doing it wrong. Which I think is a good, is a good lesson to go away with, to come away with. So I think combining what I learned yesterday and what I learned today from Rachel Aaron's, this is all like pretty much part one of her book. So it's just about 5.30 now. I spent a good hour writing really, really solidly. I don't know if that's a verb, but hey, we're going with it. I wrote about a whole scene. Um, my attention did drop off like once I started doing other things, once I got distracted, once I got distracted by chores and other things, and I think I wrote for about an hour. Um, yeah, I wrote a whole scene. It's not the whole chapter, but I think that's progress. Hey, it's Haley from the future. I just wanted to go ahead and end this video by saying that yesterday, um, after I recorded my writing, I actually went back at around like 7 or 8 at night and I wrote pretty much the whole second chapter 
of my book, um, of this new project. And I really think that's because I had a clear intention in mind, because I had what my past self wrote um, at the end of the first session to look back on as I was writing in the second session. And I just wanted to end this video on the last paragraph that Rachel Aaron has in this chapter. I know this video is a lot shorter than the first episode. I'm going to try and make all the episodes the same length. Famous last words, probably. Um, but probably the, the next episodes will be the same length as the first. But in this case, the chapter was a lot shorter than I expected. So, hey, what can you do? If your goal is to become a faster writer, the single most efficient change you can make isn't actually upping your daily word count, but eliminating the days where you're not writing. Also, you'll be a lot happier. That is something that I need to work on. I don't want to write just on the days that there are sprints or just on the days where I'm filming a video because obviously I can't do that 24-7. Um, there aren't writing sprints 24-7 except for the World Write-a-thon which is coming up in a couple of weeks. I think that's something that I really want to focus on in these next videos throughout this series and just in my life uh, generally. I do want to write, I do want to sit down and write every single day. A friend of mine has pledged to write for 10 minutes each day, and I think that's a really good goal, so I'm going to try and do that. And I wanted to end on this last quote. So don't blame your subconscious when it doesn't want to write. Listen to it. Treat your instincts with respect, especially if they're telling you to stop. Let your daily writing be a joy instead of a chore, and everything else becomes easy. Thanks for watching everybody, let me know your comments and questions in the comments down below, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye! So honestly I think I might just end these videos or this series with a snapshot of my word count each time, so you're welcome, here's what I got in this video.